our day The way of the crypt of warriors Can't rely on the bank, there's no way Good morning, good morning, Big Square Road to Root.com With two morning horn of Z's Your sip of chaga coffee I'm back on coffee, thank God All right, um <clears throat> Here we go Fed rate hike was a fake out uh, the markets are now pricing in. There won't be four rate hikes. Remember, this was declared um, in early January. This is part of behavioral finance that um, Larry Summers brought to the administration years and years and years ago. Behavioral fin finance is a – it's actually a, a form of – they teach it in college. Harry, uh, Larry Summers teaches it at Harvard. I don't know if he still teaches it. I think he's he's too busy with the um, his crypto work. <laughs> Scary. Larry Summers needs to go out with all the banksters and, and the criminals. But he taught the world how to um, fake, lie, and cheat. And that's what behavioral finance is. The theory is if you say things are better, people will believe they're better, so they'll go out and spend and do everything necessary. So if the... Federal Reserve says they're going to hike rates. That gets everything into control, but they never actually hike. Um, and I don't think they're going to hike. If they do, it'll be a tiny, tiny percentage. They're not going to hike, you know, what was it, Volcker, 17 18% hiked in the 1980s to get the price of gold and silver down. The reality, though, in the 80s, uh, Volcker, in Volcker's book, he said, oh, we should have watched the gold price better. No. Alan Greenspan had that under control with the computer programs that he wrote. So, of course, the the price of gold has been computer managed with computers and derivatives since the early 1970s. The invention of computers was the inauguration of decoupled finance from gold, silver, and any kind of reality. Uh, <clears throat> even the petrodollar, which probably held strong into the 80s. Uh, was taken out by computers and derivative trading as a form of control. The petrodollar meaning Alan Greenspan and um, I forgot the other guy's name. One of the, the criminals back in the 70s went to Saudi Arabia and said, you will only, only buy oil, uh, sell oil in U.S. dollars. And everybody else has to do the same or we're going to bomb them. And that created artificial demand for the U.S. dollar. That was no longer necessary come the 80s and 90s with the computer rigging programs uh, implemented and um, ICE, the Intercontinental Exchange, taking over all the trading of oil and commodities and everything else. And the COMEX rigging, uh, CFTC started in early 1970s to run cover. I hope everybody understands this. If you've been on the road to Ruta long enough, you get it. <clears throat> so we are still under the control of computer market trading um, every single price you see is fake. Every single price you see is fake, uh, including the silver price. Now, doesn't mean there's people not trying to take them out. Nice little spike here this morning. Uh, this probably gave Bank of America a heart attack, but this this isn't normal trading. Something happened. Either one of two things. Either Bank of America said, oh, my God, let's see what happens if we stop shorting, increasing our short position. They did for half a second, and it spiked up. And then they threw the shorts back on. Or someone started attacking and buying a hell of a lot of uh, silver contracts that they that B of A wasn't expecting. I don't know exactly what's going on. Clearly, it was a test of something. Now, a year ago today, uh, the Wall Street Bets guys came on and everyone was saying, oh, yeah, the retail investors are going to take out silver. It had nothing to do with those guys. I love them to death. I absolutely love everybody, all the retail investors of silver. Um, but it had nothing to do with the spiking of the silver price towards $30. Like zero, nothing. Um, there was one entity, one single entity who bought 30%, 33% of SLV in one quarter, in the first quarter of last year. That's what caused the price to spike. 30% was 190 million ounces. Now, the Wall Street bet guy is probably, I don't know, four or five million ounces. This is a 190 million ounces ounce position that was taken on an SLV, meaning Bank of America and friends had to deposit 190 million ounces of silver, according to the prospectus, and they did. Um, 
So in that entity, which I've shown quite a few times, has now sold the majority of it. And they are down here. They are no longer the number one holder. Uh, they only own 5 million ounces now. One year later, look, down 96%. One year later, they went from 190 million ounces in the first quarter of 2000. And they barely had any in December. Um, to now they have 5 million ounces. You don't think there's a battle going on behind the scenes? And I have no doubt that Rustin Benham and the CFTC, the Treasury, and the Fed went to these guys at Private Advisor Group and said, you are to stand down in your purchases of silver. <laughs> we need to control this market. What are you thinking? Now, Private Advisor Group is, is huge, but they haven't stopped. Look, they have now, since they you know sold off their uh, SLV, because, you know, the government said, don't you dare. Um, they have ended up buying CEF and Sprott Physical Gold Trust, PHYS and CEF. Um, they up their involvement there. I mean, it's not big, but it's up 70% and 73%. So these guys, private advisor group knows what's going on. Any hedge fund in the world that can scrounge up a couple billion dollars and destroy the silver market, the question is you're going to run into regulators. So this is what happened uh, if you look at the daily chart on this better graph. I use I use the um, trading view to determine where the moving averages are, and that's what is being defended. Um, you can see the spike right there, and then the current uh, – the big one's the 200-day moving average. <clears throat> they might try to spike it down below the 100 and 150. Not that big a deal because it's the 200-day moving average that it has to breach and hold for everybody to close out, all the tech traders to close out their shorts, which will add fuel to the fire, and to try to go long. Um, then you have to find a new shorter, which is the hard part. That's why Bank of America is trapped. Are they really trapped? No. The Fed can come in and, and do whatever they want. But I think we're at that end game. We're very soon going to see the end of this insane manipulation. <clears throat> and I think, I have always said, a great way to get out of this without destroying everything is to add Veritasium to every trade. Veritasium is blockchain peer-to-peer -peer transactions. Um, all you crypto people, if you want freely traded cryptos, Add Veritasium to all the exchanges so they can't lie, cheat, and steal. Obviously, silver and gold needs a, a true regulator, and that is not the CFTC. They have been shown time and time again to be massively corrupt and on the side of the banksters. To keep, it's all good for the system. As Don DeBerry Stump said, oh, we can't have people losing money in their 401k. <laughs> That's what she said. They have to allow criminality so people don't lose their money in their retirement funds. It's just this world is so insane that we live in, but it is what it is. Um, so let's see if Reggie Middleton is ready to um, help out the government like Cliff's dad has said he is. So, what, hey, Reggie, what have you been doing this morning on your daily workout? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, see, here's the deal. The um, the rating agencies, uh, not the rating agencies, the uh, SEC, Security and Exchange Commission, would have put this in the lawsuit, in their lawsuit against Reggie. If you read that lawsuit, they put really personal things that are just, I mean, I think it was the most racist lawsuit ever in the history of the SEC or filing or whatever you want to call it. Um, they would have put this in. And he shows off by showing off his workout in the morning. That's the kind of people at the SEC that filed that claim. Insane. Um, so, no, I think I think Reggie's ready to um, – he's not out to hurt anybody. And all the crypto people are, oh, my God, you're going to destroy decentralized finance. <coughs> the reality is, hey, if it's truly de decentralized, nobody cares. Reggie doesn't care. If it's decentralized, it's decentralized. But I don't know any crypto that's decentralized at the end of the day. Um, every Everything, if it has a website, it's obviously centralized.
Uh, the closest would probably be Bitcoin, except the Bitcoin core developers are comp completely controlled by the Digital Currency Group, whose chairman or advisor is Larry Summers, all the way back to uh, behavioral finance. So anyway, the futures are very exciting. Yes, you should be hanging on to your cryptos. How many times have we been through a downdraft in cryptos? And I love it when the the gold bugs and who really don't understand cryptos and um, all the naysayers come out. That's when they come out of the closet. I told you so. I told you so. I told you so. I fell for it years and years and years ago and sold all my Bitcoin when Bitcoin went from uh, $1,200 down to like $200. And oh my God, do I regret that? So I made a pledge back in probably 2014, 2015 that just hang on for dear life. And it has proven to be the best way to get through this. Anybody who's bought cryptos for the first time in the last couple of years, hold on for dear life because there's there's rosy days in the end. And the real exciting time is going to be when the, the U.S. dollar gets destroyed. And that happens when a single too-big-to-fail bank like Bank of America goes down and then all banks are gone. And it would take Congress to resurrect them and Congress can't even agree on what type of pencil to use when they're you know, ordering their supplies in their offices. They can't agree on anything, so there will be no ba bank bailout, obviously. So what happens? All debt is wiped out, and the system falls apart, and we rebuild it. And I, I believe definitely that Reggie Middleton's Veritasium is a great way to rebuild the old system. If you're looking to have exchanges open up again after they close, Veritasium, peer-to-peer -peer transactions. That's what Reggie was trying to do. That's why he was taken down by the SEC and those criminals. I hope everybody in the crypto world understands this and isn't just mad at very, oh, he's trying to, to get a patent on, on decentralization. No, he had a great idea and he tried to implement it and he was stopped. And in the meantime, other companies were not stopped. And so they got to implement Reggie's idea. And then all of a sudden the SEC or the, the patent office of the USA on purpose came out and granted Reggie his patent. The, the beauty of, <clears throat> cryptocurrencies is anybody and their mother can invent something better than what Reggie did and overtake Reggie. That's free market capitalism. But nobody has. They keep using his technology. So we will see. Yeah, if you, if you don't like that Reggie can enforce a patent on your DeFi type of coin, invent a new system that doesn't infringe on his patent. It's that simple. But it's very hard because Reggie did an amazing job, got the right people, the right patent lawyers. The idea was sound, and the idea was to take out J.P. Morgan and friends. But the SEC stopped his implementation of, of I mean, gold and silver. Any gold and silver crypto company that is backed, you know, by gold and silver, it completely infringes on Reggie's patent by far. And 99.9% .9 of the DeFi companies, NFTs, infringes on Reggie's patent. So it'll be interesting. Reggie's not out to destroy anybody, but he is out to say, hey, I love that you're using my technology. Just pay me rent for it. And Veritasium tokens, I think the U.S. government is going to give back the 98 million Veritasium tokens to Reggie. That would be the honest thing to do in an honest world. If the bad guys are taken out, Truth and honesty might, might come back to the United States of America. Might. But that would involve turning around some extremely embarrassing wrongs that the SEC did and the CFTC did. And they don't like, the government doesn't like to admit they're wrong. Um, and they, of course they'll say, oh, it was good for the good of the country. That, the price of silver going up to $1,000 an ounce would be too disruptive. I don't care about free markets. It would be too disruptive. Reggie Middleton's technology was too disruptive when he invented it in 2013. And then a bunch of DeFi companies came out and it's like, okay. SEC didn't stop them. Why'd they stop Reggie? Was it the color of his skin? I, you know, I am the again. I am the last one to say that. 
But if, if it stares at you in the face, what happened, for example, EOS versus Veritasium, where Veritasium, they, they literally strip Reggie of everything he had, all his assets, everything, and besmirched him, if you ask me, in an extremely racist and wrong suit. He was working with them, and then they flipped. The guy who was doing it, or were told to do it, left and went to work for another crypto company. That's insane. That's criminality. That's third world country shit. But that's the United States of America. There's a lot of payback to give Reggie. I Give him his coins back. 98 million coins. It's that easy. And let Reggie do what he was going to do in 2014, 2015. Implement peer-to-peer -peer transactions so that we don't have to hang out with these criminals. JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, they'd all be gone. All the middlemen would be gone. Peer-to-peer -peer transactions. Anyway, <clears throat> that's my story. Yes, cryptos are bouncing back. Um, great time to buy. You always want to buy when cryptos are low. You want to sell when they're high if you're into selling cryptos. I'm not. If I want to buy a car, I'll buy a car with crypto money. If I'm, I'm a hodler. I like holding on to my cryptos. Pick the good ones, pick the right ones, and you're gonna if you you know spread out a little bit, don't just pick one, but a good portfolio of five to ten cryptos is really all you need. It's a good ones, and you sit and hold them. Not all of them will work out the way you want. But if you pick the correct ones that you think are have a great future, something like Theta, they're getting patent after patent. They are the future of the internet, for Christ's sake. Yeah, hang on to that baby. If it crashes, buy a little more. Anyway, that's my take. Again, listen to the Cliff High discussion on the private road. Great stuff about what the bad guy's next attack is, if they survive that long. Um, also, go and sign up and get your tickets to the road show. Uh, the dates and the places are all will all be in by... The dates are already there in the cities. Um, the places should be in by Friday. We've got most of them in, um, so go check it out, and you can buy your tickets right below, right here, the Freedom Roadshow. And come hang out with us for a few hours as we travel around in, in the RV. Uh, it's going to be a blast, so I'm looking forward to that. Anyway, it's BigSquareRoadRoader.com. I'll talk to you later.